Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Scorpius HD. Welcome back to another video. Today we are checking out this 2014 Acura TL. This car is owned by my dad and his family here in Union, South Carolina. And this is going to be the most in-depth review of I will have ever refilmed because I get to have basically the whole entire day with this car so I can go over as many quirks and features as I possibly can. And so now this is going to be the best and most in-depth review I will have ever filmed. So hope you guys enjoy it. This car is finished off in white. Looks really, really good. The car is powered by a 3.5 liter V6 with 280 horsepower and 254 pound feet of torque. And with a curb weight of 3,726 pounds to 4,001 pounds, you can expect 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. And with that 3.5 liter V6, you can expect miles per gallon to be 20 in the city and 29 out on the highway. Dimensions wise, this car has a length of 194 inches, it has a length of 74 inches, and has a width of 55 inches. The car has a 6 speed automatic, but there is also a 6 speed manual version out there as well. This car currently has all wheel drive, but there is also a front wheel drive one as well. So now we move underneath the hood of the 2014 Acura TL. As you guys can see, it's pretty standard. It's a pretty rather small engine on the inside of this car. Well, at least from this point of view, it looks small. Everything else is covered in, in this plastic, which still looks pretty cool, I must say. Now I was going to talk about a little bit of a few little tiny quirks underneath the engine. Over here on the right, you will see a button that has battery terminal. That piece right there could actually be removed. Yes, that is correct. There's the battery terminal. You pull off this cap here just like that, and you should see there is the battery terminal, as you can see with the red plus on it. Then you can put it right back on, just like you would, just like you put it back, just like you took it off. Then if you look on the very top of the hood, you'll actually notice the vehicle emission control information. It gives you all of the vehicle emission control information that you would possibly want to know about the vehicle. Now an interesting thing, you guys will actually notice you got the engine coolant diagram right here. However, the actual engine coolant tab is actually underneath the car. So how do you access it? Well actually all of this plaque all of this plastic that you see can actually be removed. You do, you do have to remove a lot of it if you want to fix a lot of stuff. I ain't going to remove it in the review, but you, what you would technically do is just pull back up this tab right here, and then that's where you would find your engine coolant cap, and then you can obviously put engine coolant inside of this car. And one thing that is exposed in the engine is if you actually look to the far left of the engine compartment, you will actually see the windshield washer fluid. You can open this cap, and of course you got, you got all this where you, all your windshield washer fluid will go. That's kind of the sample. That's what you would expect from any car. Even my 97 Camaro has that. And if you actually look, you will actually notice these two little, I guess you could say there's like little tiny slight uh, tw twisty levers, I guess what you could say, you could twist them. But on, on top and bottom of them, you will actually notice it looks like a D arrow U. Most people are going to wonder, what does D U stand for? Well, that actually stands for do and undo. And what that means, as Pam was high, it means whichever arrow, whichever way the arrow is facing is the way it is. And the, whichever letter is on that side, for that means so the, the D has the arrow pointing up. So it means this way is the do side. It means you turn this thing to the right, and that locks it and that tightens it. And the opposite way, of course that untightens it you can fully untighten this if you want to i'm not although i'm not going to do that but that's what the do and undo means and same thing up here at the very top you also have a right left just like as you guys would expect that stands for right and left and i will say the engine does look really really clean with the acura logo on top of it as well of course you got your engine oil cap right down here at the bottom as well and overall the engine compartment is pretty standard for any type of car. It's what you would kind of expect from any Acura or any, really any car model basically, apart from that engine ones. Of course to shut the hood, if you want to shut, the, shut it the right way, all you want to simply do, this is going to crack out my microphone so I'm not going to sh um, record that, but what I'm actually going to do is bring it up to about here and after, all you just want to simply do is just let it go, see ya. Now I'm going to stop talking, you just, I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like. You know, my microphone will really crack out after this, so let me show y'all. And after that, whenever it closes like that, you simply push it down. Just like that, and that's how you shut the hood. Now let's go ahead and start talking about locking, unlocking the doors to the Acura TL. And now there's three different ways I have found to lock the doors, and two different ways to unlock the doors. 
Now, one of, of course, one of the ways is through the key fob. You press the lock and unlock button, and that, of course, that locks and unlocks the doors. Speaking of the key fobs, here is what the key fob looks like. It's a really, really cool, nice and sleek. What you would see from any Acura from this time period. Of course, the very first button you got is the lock button. The second one is the unlock. The third one, you hold that down to unlock the trunk. I'll get to that in a few minutes. And then, of course, you also got the panic button to help you find your car in a parking lot. Actually, a little tiny button that you press on the top of it. You press, hold down that button there, and that's actually the spare. That's actually the manual key to unlock the car in case your battery dies and this is what the key looks like as you can see it's just like what you'd see in any other car as you can see you, slide, you would just simply slide it into the door handle and this next to your key fob and that's how you would unlock the door from the outside and going more on the key fob you turn the key fob around and you can see it has the Acura logo this car when you first got it you get to give the two keys and one key says driver one and one key says driver two I got the driver two key as you can see now another way to um, lock the door from the outside is actually looking on the door handle itself you'll see the regular door handle then you'll also see the um, emergency ch um, door release right there which is uh, that's where you put the manual key and if you actually look on the actual part of the door handle where you pull you will actually do this there's actually a black button you press that black button and that locks the door from the outside without you even having to use the key and another way to do it, if I keep the door unlocked the car will actually lock by itself. One thing I forgot to mention on the key fob, look on the very top left of it. You will actually notice a little tiny, what looks like a little tiny dot on the top left of it. Well, that's actually a little light so that whenever you press any button on the key fob, that light will turn red. As you can see, that light will turn red through, just to let you know that you pressed a button. It's a really cool feature. And now if I go ahead and unlock the door, the third and final way to, uh, to lock the doors from the outside of this car, is this car actually does it by itself. Yes, you can actually walk away from the car without even having to lock the car using your key fob or the door handle. So now, after about 15 seconds after the car has been unlocked for a while, the car will automatically lock off by itself so you don't have to press any buttons on it and those are all the different ways you can lock and unlock the doors now let's go ahead and start getting into the trunk so now there's three different ways to unlock the trunk there's one run from the inside and then two on the outside let's go and start with the interior one you unlock the door and actually get inside the car and you actually look on the door panel you will actually see two buttons one that looks like it has the trunk on the on it and there's also another one with the gas cap well we'll get to the gas cap one in a minute if you actually press the one that looks like a car with this trunk open you will actually see the trunk actually pops itself up as you can see and that's one of the ways to unlock the trunk from this car that's one of the ways a second way is is by the key fob if you actually hold down the the button that looks like a car with this trunk open the trunk will also pop open that way as well and the third and final way is a, is a way that most people with these cars probably don't even know about if you actually look right underneath the small rear spoiler you will actually see a clear button it's color it's color coded with the car to make it seem more slick you press that button right there and the car makes a little beeping noise and that's another way to unlock the trunk from the back of this car this is all the three ways to lock and to open up the trunk. Now that we're in the trunk, let's go and take a look at some of the cool quirks and features inside of the trunk. As you see, it's just like, like any other normal trunk. You, but you guys, if you guys look at the very, very back of it, you guys will actually notice what looks like a little plastic uh, cubby. We'll get to that in a second. If you look on the top of the trunk, of course, you got your emergency inside trunk release in case you get kidnapped. That's by federal regulations, so all cars have that. And if you actually pull up the Acura TL piece back here, you'll actually notice there's more storage. But underneath that, you pull a little tab at the bottom of it right here. You can actually see more tools and stuff. I'll get those later on in the video. And I think I forgot to mention how to get into the trunk. So if I go ahead and go back and unlock the door again, if you actually look underneath the driver's door panel, right underneath it, you will actually see what looks like a car with its hood open. Right, you pull that latch back, and of course that pops open the trunk, kind of like any other normal car. Now let's go ahead and start talking about lighting. So now I've already pre-recorded what all the lights look like inside of this car. So let me go ahead and get to all the lighting parts of this car right now. And here, of course, are the front turn signals. As you can see, they all look really, really cool. Here's the front and close view of the front turn signal. When we turn on the turn signal, 
lights in the mirrors also turn on as well and of course here is the rear turn signals as well looking all nice and fancy here's a close-up view of what the rear turn signals look like and the cool thing is you can even see the ones on the mirrors from behind as well which look really really cool and then here are the daytime running lights as you guys can see and as i'm scrolling through i've put it on the auto section and now here are all the lights on together the high beams and also the fog lights then here are the rear lights we got the regular regular we got the regular rear lights and then of course we got the brake lights popping up right here which they look really really cool and then of course we now have the reverse lights now i'll start talking about the gas cap now the gas cap is actually fairly interesting this ain't like no regular gas cap now you see if you walk up to it you can't press on it to open it or pull it so how do you do it well if i go back inside the car door again now we're going back to that double button panel on the door panel as you can see look, we already talked about the trunk opener but if i'm right in front of that you'll see what looks like it has a gas pump on it you press that and then the gas cap will actually automatically pop open that's the same feature that's in the c5 corvette it's really cool to see that in here now they've got the gas cap open as you see it's just like any other regular gas cap so i'm not going to go into that too much we can't talk about talk about a car review without the car's exhaust nut this car has dual exhaust and they're rather rather large exhaust as well and those exhausts sure do make that six cylinder sound amazing i'll go and start it let's start it up and hear a couple of revs Now let's go ahead and start talking about the styling of the Acura TL. And I must say, I really do love the sporty look of the Acura TL. It's like a more practical version of the Acura NSX. And that really does look kind of like the Acura NSX. If you look at the front end of an NSX, you look at the front end of this, you will notice some major similarities between those two cars. And they do look fairly similar. That's one of the things that I do like about this car. And that's pretty much all of the exterior quirks about the car that I wanted to go over. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the interior of the car. Now let's go ahead and move on to the interior of the car. Well, the very first thing you do whenever you open up the door is you are greeted with the Acura logo on the front door sill. As you can see, it's actually on all door sills as well which is really really cool that's a really nice feature to have in a car like this the door open you can see the beautiful interior that especially the one that the one that this one has black and also with tan, with tan around it it's an absolutely gorgeous interior and it would be so futuristic of its time also inside the door sill you can also see the tire loading information the side airbag information and also a bit of a quick information about who made it while we're here let's go ahead and start talking about the seat controls the seat controls are pretty much like you would expect for any type of car you just long long dial you press it forward to move the seat forward to move the seat back you lift it up and down to raise and lower the seat and then of course you got the dial in the middle you twist that to the right that actually lowers the backrest as well but what this is really interesting so now you could actually adjust how much the backrest is indented that's what this last option is as you can see as i press this button this button here it actually adjusts the indention of the backrest so you can make it be more tight or a little bit more smooth that as something i've never seen in any car and that's something really cool to mention all right now we move on to the interior of the 2014 acura tl and i must say the quality is crazy incredible especially the steering wheel i love the leather that's built with the steering wheel there is plastic in the center but i will say the, the leather on the outside it does feel really good and really sporty and of course you got all your buttons on the on the steering wheel which i'll get to those later on in the video one crazy thing that absolutely surprised me was that this car actually has paddle shifters yes this car actually has paddle shifters that is the coolest thing i've ever seen in a car like this and whenever i get to the very end of the video with talking about the driving experience you guys will actually be able to hear me using them and they, i'm not gonna say and i will be honest with you the paddle shifter quality is really cool and also the tachometer is just absolutely crazy the gauge cluster just looks absolutely futuristic from its time of course you got the speedo on the right the tachometer on the left of course you also get the temperature gauge on the far left and then you also got 
the fuel gauge on the far right. And now whenever you get into this car, you can probably want to know how to start it. So now let's go and start. First, I'll start talking about the stuff about how to start the car and stuff like that. If you, know, if you actually look to the right of the steering wheel, you will actually see actually two different items. Of course, you've got the red start stop button. You put your foot on the brake and then of course you start the engine start. You press the engine start stop button to fire this car into life like you're starting a fighter jet. And then you will also notice another thing. If you actually look right underneath that, you will actually see what looks like a cubby. And what that cubby is there for, that's a place to, where you can actually store your key while you're driving. Is you don't have to keep the key in your pocket the whole time. All you can simply do is just keep the, put the key in this pocket, and then you can keep the key safe while you're driving. That's a really cool feature, and I wish more cars had it. When I got inside of this car for the first time, the first thing I immediately noticed on the door panel and also on the front passenger side dashboard is, is actually this kind of like textured panel on it. And I, I thought it was carbon fiber at first. That is a really cool feature. It makes this car seem even more sporty than it really is. And I wish more cars would actually include something like that. All their cars are just plain. This one, they just wanted to make it seem a little bit more crazy and a little bit more sporty than it really is. It ain't carbon fiber, but it sure does look like carbon fiber and it looks really cool moving back to the door panel of course you got your window controls and they work just like any other window controls as you would that you would see in literally every car from the car industry so i'm not going to go into those back on the door panel you got the two buttons right above the window controls now of course the left one of course controls the lock and unlock buttons simple like in any other normal car however the one on the right that actually is a child powered door lock system. So now let's say if your child is, or your passengers are being annoying in the back, you don't want them to roll down their windows anymore, press that button right there, and that will actually prevent them from rolling the back windows up and down. And a little yellow light comes on to let you know that it's turned on. And of course, let's say the kids are no longer being annoying and you're, you'll let them freely roll down the windows, just press it again, that light will turn off and then the back windows can freely be rolled down. And of course, you got the grab handle right above that. That's, that's that's what's something that you can use to shut the door with. You can pull it shut with this door handle. And then of course you also got the regular door handle. You pull that door open of course to unlock to open the door. And of course above that you got the door lock button. You press that button forward to lock it and you pull it back to unlock it. And then let's actually look at the buttons in between the door handle and also the mirror controls. You will actually see a button that looks has one, two, and also set. So now Let's say there's a seating position that you always want to be in every single time you drive this car. That's what that's basically for. You can set two different seating positions that you want. And whenever you press the, that one of those two buttons that you set it on, it'll actually automatically get to that seating position that you wanted. So let's say if I set, like, let's say if I want to keep the seating position the way it is right now, I would press set. That was after I would press which button that I wanted to go on. I said I wanted it to go on to, so that when every single time you press two, it'll automatically get in, it automatically adjusts that seating position to the way you want it. That's a really interesting feature, and I wish all cars had it. And of course, you also got door panel storage. You got a little tiny pocket right here, right behind the mirror controls, and you also got a bigger pocket at the bottom, and that's on both door panels. So now we're looking at these three buttons on the side of the steering wheel. Now the far left one on American models, this is an American model, that's the blind spot monitoring system. The, right here, that's the blind spot monitoring system. The middle one, that turns on and off traction control, and the right one does nothing for American models, but actually, and on Canadian models, all three of these buttons are used. Climate control vents, they work just like any other regular car. So I'm not going to go into those. And this is actually the blind spot monitoring system. So if you actually look right underneath it, whenever you're driving, that's your blind spot monitor. That's what you can turn on and off. So if you turn this off right here, if you press this button here and turn that off, this right here is actually a light. Whenever somebody's in your blind spot, a light turns on right inside the car instead of on the mirror. It actually, it actually lets you know if somebody's in your blind spot. Or you can, if you don't want that light to turn on, while you're, while you're driving, you can always turn it off by pressing that button right there, and that's what that button's for. If you look right above those three buttons, you'll actually see two more buttons right above it. You, they have looked like a speed on with, with a plus and minus. What those actually are, are bright are actually the brightness settings for the tachometer. As you see with the beetle popping up, I'm actually adjusting the brightness of all of the gauge cluster. That is so cool. And of course, we got the stocks. So now we got the we got all the stocks. You got the far left option. That's actually the lights. You twist it. That turns on and off. 
the lights and then actually the far middle one here that actually turns on and off the fog lights because yes, this car does have fog lights and this turns them on and off and then of course you also got your turn signals press it down to turn on your left turn signal and right to turn up turn on your right turn signal just like every other car and of course you also got your windshield wiper stock on this side as well does just works like a regular windshield wiper stock Moving back to the gates cluster, you guys will actually notice a little tiny screen in between it. That screen is controlled by these three buttons at the bottom right of the steering wheel. If you press the information button, that actually changes different information about it. Like it shows your tire pressure, average speed, and 30 minutes like driving time, range, 20, and your miles per gallon. Or you can make it not show nothing at all. However, if you go to the Customize Settings tab, you can actually adjust different parts in that by pressing the Select and Reset button, and there you can actually choose different settings for different for two different drivers. Now, if I go ahead and press the Information button again, you can actually see you have three different options. You got Default All, Change Settings, Exit, and also stuff like that. Now, if I actually press Default All by pressing the Select button on the steering wheel. It'll actually show you all your different setup options. You can actually set different versions as well. I'm going to set this version right here. Put it back on default all. Whenever you're done and ready to get out of it, just simply press the information button, go to um, exit, and just press the select button. You go out of it, and that's pretty much all you're saying. I'm not going to go too much into that. I'll let you guys have fun with that because I'm, I'm going to we'll start exploring around it, though. And if you're in the miles per gallon tab, and then you actually press the select button, you can actually change different options while with that displayed. As you can see, it's like it shows your oil life, your miles per gallon, and you can also see all your how much oil is left, oil life 80%. It's really cool in different settings. So press it again. You can see you can also adjust inside of here as well. I'm going to go ahead and get out of it though because I don't want to mess up anything. You can also adjust stuff from the tire pressure as well. You can pretty much make it say whatever you want from different settings and that's a really cool feature. And right underneath that you also got your drive modes. As you can see as I'm going through different gears it actually does it actually changes. Now there's also an S mode. I did forget to mention this part in the video. Well, S mode is that sport mode. In order to use the pedal shifters at their full use you have to make sure the car is in this s mode or sport mode if you want to get full use of the paddle shifters just shift the gear lever down into s mode and then you have full use of the paddle shifters now let's go ahead and move on to the steering wheel side so then we got the volume controls on the left side of course that controls the volume of the of the radio and you can also change the channels of the radio by pressing the channel button and now you also got the mode button the mode button changes the mode pressing the button re repeatedly selects the f1 fm2 am xm1 and xm2 and also a disc mode so you can actually change all your different like different radio stations like FM XM and stuff like that just by pressing this mode button so you can listen to whatever you want moving on to the right side of the steering wheel you have the cruise control button of course and the cancel button is a way to, is another way to actually turn off and cancel cruise control or of course you can just put your foot on the brake or press the accelerator to turn off cruise control as well and now we've also got the re the RSE the RES XL and deselect so now you can press and hold the RS and accelerator button when you reach the desired cruising speed release the button or push on the accelerator pedal accelerate to desired cruising speed and then press the set the deselect button and to increase the speed in very very small amounts tap the reset re RES and accelerator button each time you do this your vehicle speeds up about one mile per hour I mean that's a pretty interesting thing then of course at the bottom left of the steering wheel you got all your phone controls you got your call button and you also got the hang up button and then you also got the back button then you also got the speaker button like on the steering wheel of course you got your paddle shifters on the right I still cannot get over that this car has freaking paddle shifters I still can't it's still unbelievable to me moving back on to the center control stack now this is this there is a lot to go over in this thing so let's go ahead and get started all right so this car does have dual zone climate control so that means the pad driver side can have a certain temperature and the passenger side can have a certain temperature and you can adjust them on the on the left side of course you got automatic you can just on uh, and the, you can set that will make the car decide what you want of course you got your um, climate you also got the climate control temperature you press up where the red arrow points up and that adjusts the um, uh, temperature you can see in the center screen right next to it that your temperature is actually going up then you also got different modes so you press the mode button that actually selects what um, 
like where you want the air to come out. As you can see, if I press this button right here on the screen, you can either make it either make it face toward uh, towards your feet, or you can either make it face towards your feet and your face, or just your face. And of course, you can also turn on the windshield defogger that way as well. As you can see, I'm going to put it right back to where I had it before, where it's facing on both. You see, it actually shows a little diagram in the center screen. You also can turn on and off the climate controls by pressing this button right here, right here as well. You can also sync it to make it be the same on both sides. And the bottom one, that actually adjusts the fan speed. As you can see, as I adjust the fan speed, it actually shows a little diagram in the screen that I'm actually adjusting the climate controls. It's just pretty much like, like we do expect in any car. Same things on the driver's side as well. As you can see, as I, as I adjust the driver's side, it gets warmer. You can change the different modes inside of it as well. You also got the front windshield defogger on this side as well. And you also got the rear windshield defogger as well. In case you go out that one morning and your windshield is all foggy, that's what those out there are for. And you also got your circulation button as well and then you also got your ac button as well and in the very top in the very very top here you also got your climate control vents just like the ones on the driver on the on the door on the uh, near the doors right here on the dashboards and of course in the middle of that you also got your hazard light buttons moving back in the center you also got your cd changer slot where you can actually put in different C cds and stuff now we're going on to these to the center control panel here of course you got your volume control in the middle as well you got your coming control like your that's your volume control you press this right here and it actually turns off most of the screen options like most of the screen display options as you can see as i press that button most of the screen displayed options are turning off you also got different mode buttons this year as well you press am and fm that actually changes the radio station from am to fm of course you got am fm1 fm2 and just like what you would expect you also got XM, you got all your different XM options, you got XM1, XM2, XM1, XM2. You also got the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 buttons right here at the bottom. Let's say if I put, got put in an AM, as I adjust it, after I put in an AM, I actually press the 1 button, it actually selects different AM options. So you got 1, AM1, AM2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's pretty much a different way to actually adjust your different radio stations as well. And then if you look on the far right, you also got this button. That's actually audio different. Here's what you can actually use to adjust different audio parts. Like your bass, treble, fader, balance, and all the normal stuff that you would want to use to adjust all of your different uh, audio settings. And let's say if I want to adjust those, if you want to go to a bass, use the dial to use everything. So you adjust everything with the, you can adjust the bass and treble. You can select exactly, you can select exactly how much bass and treble that you want. All of it's adjusted by the center dial in the center, as you can see. It's really, really neat. And then you right next to that button, you also got the disc button. And like let's say if you put the uh, a disc in, you put it, you press that disc button, and it plays whatever is in that disc is in the uh, CD slot. And then you also got the HDD and auxiliary. You can actually see as I press this button, it actually adjusts. You can see you can uh, fix the Bluetooth audio. You can also adjust the. Uh, all you can also adjust the USB and no data and stuff. Bluetooth audio, HDD, USD, and stuff like that. Cause like if you put a USB or something inside of this car, that's what you can actually use to adjust to that USB. And then you also got the tune button underneath the category button. I'll get to the category button in a few minutes. What the tune button does is it actually allows you to use the selector knob to tune the radio to a desired frequency. And so yes, it's pretty much as you turn this dial, as you can see, the higher as I turn this dial to the right, it has a higher frequency. And as I press it down to the lower side, it gets a lower frequency. Then you also got the skip button on the right side here. The skip function searches up and down from the current frequency to find a station with a strong signal. To activate it, you just press and hold. As you can see, as I activate it, it actually adjusts to different radio stations. As I see, as I'm holding it down, just like this, it actually adjusts it as well and even and it can it can even do it while you're not even holding it see as I press it it actually still goes even higher and higher as you can see whenever you want it to stop just press back on it now what the scan and slash auto select means you press that and it automatically selects it for you as you can see as I press it it adjusts and it still adjusts until it finds the right frequency for you so now we move on to the category buttons. Now whenever you're in XM, you can actually adjust what kind of category you want to listen to. So like as I adjust the category, you want to listen to Howard Stern, comedy, sports, or college, or anything like that, NHL, NBA. 
podcasts you can listen that's pretty much it's pretty much like a category set for what you can listen to on the radio it's a really really cool feature and that's 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 something i cannot get over and also christian that's what i would listen to so now moving on from all the center um, control stack pieces now we're going to move on to the bottom option on all of this information so now this all this option control the center screen up here well let's go ahead and start going over it and whenever you start up that screen this is where you'll end up with the map and the map by itself it actually has some pretty cool quirks as it is most of the information i'm going to be going over is going to be controlled by this dial this dial can be twisted and it can also be adjusted like this you can also be twisted left right up and down and so that's pretty much all the normal information that you would probably want to know moving back to the map so now you could actually zoom in and out on this map using this dial as you can see as i'm twist the dial and zooms farther and farther out as you can see I'm adjusting this dial as you can see and as I adjust it it zooms farther in and out in and out in and out and you can also move around the map if you want to as well so if you want to go move around the map that's where this whole joystick option here comes into play as you adjust it you can move around the map as you can see I'm just I'm just adjusting the outer border of it as you can see as I'm adjusting the outer border of it you can actually move around the map and actually select wherever you want to go so let's say if I want to go to let me go back to where I live let me go back there to where I live so I live over here of course in South well I don't live in South Carolina but I'm visiting when I'm visiting my dad here in South Carolina and so let's go to go back to where, let's say if I want to zoom in and I want to go to Jonesville let's say if I want to go to Jonesville I'll then press enter and if it would actually tell me the forecast of the weather forecast of Jonesville, so you know what the weather is going to be like whenever I get there. You actually snap that you switch this dial over to the right, and you can actually even see the three-day forecast as well. And that's pretty much how that map works. And I must say, the quality of it it is pretty good. Like it ain't laggy at all. It ain't like it isn't unresponsive. It's pretty. It is really responsive to your whenever you twist it. So that's a really really good navigation system for the car. So now do we adjust some more of the settings? You press info and here's where you can actually see all the different information settings about the center screen. You got cellular phone. That works just like any other regular phone no that you would phone expect. You can also you connect your phone. This phone, phone this car has no phone connected which is why it's making that noise because there's no phone connected to it. So we're not even going to go into that one. But if you go to traffic incidents that actually lets you know where all the traffic and also all the, uh, the um, like crashes are. It lets you know where everything is. To where you can know what roads to avoid whenever you're um, driving, which is a really good idea. You also got weather info. You can see all of your different weather information. You can even check your radar map. It actually has a full-on radar built into this map, so you can actually see what the weather is like in your area. As you can see, it is really neat. You can even zoom in on it. You can actually see where all the rain is. It's a really cool idea for a car. Warning map. Now with the warning map, oh, I clicked the wrong button. You go to the warning map. What the warning map does is it actually lets you know where all the warnings are. It actually lets you, it actually shows the precise location where the warnings are and actually their full radius to where you know where all the warnings are. And there's currently a gale warning over here, over here near the coast of North Carolina, as you can see. What the warning list sorted by distance is it actually just lets you know what all the warnings are. As you can see, like unknown, it says gale warning and stuff like that, like when it expires, what time, and Kind of like a red. It's kind of like your own built-in weather app for the car, and you you can even check the whole all of the U.S. Um, warnings. You can literally check every single warning around the U.S. If you go to the All U.S. tab on the on the right side, you can actually adjust everything from this. By the way, every single thing I'm adjusting is being adjusted by this dial right here. Every single thing I'm adjusting, as you can see, every single thing I'm adjusting is being adjusted by that dial, just where you guys know. Then you also got your weather forecast. Now what the weather forecast does, that's interesting. So you got city vicinity, and then you also got your current position. What the current position does, it actually lets you know your current um, area of like what the weather's gonna what the weather's like in my current area. Like I'm currently here in Union it actually lets me know what the weather's like here and also a three day weather forecast what it's gonna be like for the next three days. And then what the city vicinity version is, this one's interesting. You can actually put in your own city to look up. Is you can actually look up your own city that you want. You can type in what city that you want to um, see the weather and let's say if I want to go uh Monroe. Okay, that's where I'm from. Let's try Monroe. Uh, there's the R over there. 
I mean, this thing, I, I mean, why? Now, I'm unsure why anyone would want this, but it works. And you, of course, you've got your space. You can actually add a space or you can get rid of it as well. Just like, see, turn this over to the right, you got your space. Turn it over to the left, you got you can delete it. And if you want to search it, you just press down on that enter there. And you can actually see all the different Monroes in the world. You click on whichever one you want, and it actually lets you know which one, like what the weather is like in the three day forecast for that area. This is so freaking high tech. I'm still very, not, I'm still not unsure why anyone would want to do this, but you can do it. You also got your messages tab. Any information that gets, uh, like any information about your car, like low tire or low gas or something like that, and it automatically gets sent to the message center. Voice info, and here's where the fun begins setup. Now this is where you can adjust literally the whole entire screen. If you go to press setup, you can adjust the full brightness, the contrast, the black level, volume, the volume and feedback. That's that's also about the screen, but it's not about like like adjusting how it looks. I'll get to that in a second. So brightness, click on brightness, you can actually lower and raise the brightness of the screen. As you can see, it's really cool. You also got contrast. You can adjust the contrast of the screen. You also got the black level as well. You can make it be brighter or darker, as you can see. And now also, you also go to volume. Now, now what volume is, is for this right here. The volume is what controls this right here, the middle option. So click on feedback, you can turn that on. Now what that does, interface dial feedback. as you can see, it actually makes a voice of whatever you're volume, over. Volume, brightness, contrast, black level, personal information. So now, volume. that does get annoying. But if you want to actually lower and raise the volume of it, you can actually raise and lower the volume of it. As you can see, you can. That's what the volume. That's what this volume button does. As you see, it's now at the loudest. Volume. Now it's very loud. Now I'm going to put it at the quietest. Volume. As you can see, you can actually adjust Vol different volume levels of it. As you can see, I mean, th it, this is kind volume. of. This is. I think volume. this is just a little bit overkill. Um, but you can do it. And it, I still think it's a bit overkill. And actually, it's kind of annoying too, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn it off. <laughs> you can scroll over to the other settings. You also got your basic settings, routing, and guidance. There's where you adjust your clock. You can adjust your auto daylight time and also auto, auto time zone. Whenever you um, are changing states or something with a different time zone, it automatically changes the time, or you can turn that off. Auto daylight. What auto daylight does is it automatically changes the screen from daylight mode to night mode, which I'll discuss that in a second. You click up on it, that's where you adjust the clock. That's how you adjust the clock. I'm not going to adjust it though. I'm going to go back from that. You also got your regular vehicle options, colors. Now, what color does is it actually changes the color of both the menu and also the map. If I go to map, so now this is where night mode and day mode comes in. As you can see, this is what it looks like during the day mode, and this is what it looks like during the night mode. You can actually change those colors. So by clicking these buttons right down here, so you can adjust it by clicking like this. Now it's like a beige, now it's white, now it's black, now it's blue, and now it's gray. So you can actually adjust different colors. Now whenever the car is in night and day mode, the map will be displayed in that color. So I'm going to put it in blue because I think it looks more futuristic. And now if we go to night mode, you can actually adjust what it looks like in night mode. You got the same colors, beige, white, blue, black, and gray. I'm going to keep it in black because it's darker colors, because it's gray, because it's night because I mean it's my time mean, for real now menu color now this is where it all takes place for all the menu items so as you can see the the um, the menu has a slight reddish hue onto it as you can see you can actually adjust what color hue it is go to orange and now it's orange and you go to black and you also got white and then you also got blue as you can see I adjust through it actually changes the color as you can see you can make it or you can make it white or you can make it black it's going to make it black or you can make it orange now it's orange, or you can make it red. I'm going to keep it red because it looks more sporty. You can also adjust the night version as well. I'm going to keep it set on black because it's darker. And it's like it's better for your eyes and it's darker. You also got your Acura link language. Here's where you can actually change the language from English, French, Spanish, and all that jazz. You also got wallpaper. Now what the wallpaper setting is, you can actually adjust the wallpaper of the screen. Now you know whenever you remember whenever you first started up the car, you see like a graphic or like something has like Acura in it or like Starry Night, or like a starry sky, something like that. You can actually adjust that from here. You click select wallpaper and you can actually select from two options from the factory. You got Acura, or really three. You got blank. You got Acura, and then you also got Galaxy. This is like the Galaxy one thing I was telling you about. I'm going to put it in Galaxy because Galaxy looks pretty cool. You can also import your own pictures. Let's say you don't want any of those factory options, you can actually connect a USB into this car and you can actually import your own 
photo for your background, which is crazy. You also you can you can also of course reset every single thing. Like everything like you can reset to like factory default settings. You can also make it you can also clear your own personal data as well, which is really nice. And that's pretty much all of the um, information for the for the center screen. There isn't really much to really talk about inside of the center screen because I've already done talked about everything. You can even see your own calendar if you go to the option. Like you can even see your own calendar, like all the different days and stuff like that. You go to the calendar section and audio. You also got your own, you even got your own calculator. You can use a calculator inside of your own freaking car. I mean, I mean why? This, I mean. I can see what you're trying to do, I mean, but this is absolutely crazy. I mean, you can even adjust the, you can even do the weight, length, area, volume, temperature, automotive. I mean, there, this is absolutely crazy. I mean, this is, and take note, this is in an Acura. I mean, wh who would ever need to do this? Who would ever need to freaking do this? But this, but this is so freaking cool. I mean, this is so cool. Why? But it's also so cool. If we go to press equal here, it actually calculates it all for you. I mean, what? Now going back to the wallpaper setting, if you actually go down to show wallpaper on this setting, you can actually set it to where it just shows your wallpaper, which is really neat. Now that's basically all the settings. I did rush through it. I think I did probably rush through it, but I was able to go through mostly everything about the center screen. So that's pretty much everything about that center screen. You can also access all your phone information by pressing this button from the screen as well. No phone is connected. And now that's different than the center screen, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off to get it out of our hair. Or you know what, even more, even better, I'll think I'll just set it to just that wallpaper. So you know, let me go back and go back to information and I'll go ahead and set the wallpaper. I'll set it to where it just shows my wallpaper. There we go. Nice and calm. Go we'll start talking about um, the center console area over here. Of course, you got to your handbrake. You know that works. That works just like any regular handbrake. Very all nice and simple. You also got your gear lever, which works just like any other regular gear lever. And then you also have a hidden compartment in front of this. You actually push it down and let it fall back. You actually have your own little hidden compartment. It's really cool. And it says not an ashtray on top of it. So if you're going to try to put your cigarette butts in here, well too bad and then here you also got your this here's actually where another hidden storage compartment but it's also where you actually have your um cigarette lighter or car charger port inside here as well that's where you find all your car charger port is actually hidden inside of this as well that's a really good idea you press it again it actually shuts by itself but this one's really bad so there we go you also got your cup holders right here but let's say if you don't want to actually see your cup holders and you want this piece here to be more flat and subtle but never fear you can actually pull this shut and then you can actually cover it up if you want to and of course we also got the center control stack you press this button down right here and it actually opens it up and you see it's actually not that bad you actually got your own gosh you got another car charger port in here you also got auxiliary ports and stuff like that in here as you can see the car from the factory also already comes with its own little USB-C stick so you can actually this is where you can actually connect your phone to actually upload your own wallpaper they even included a little tiny groove where you can put it right there just like this and where you can still shut the top of it and it'll still stick out just like that or if you don't want to see it at all press this button right here and you can put it right back inside there to hide it to hide it just like that so now it looks completely smooth by the way to open up the center control uh, and open up the center storage lid here you press this button down here at the bottom which it actually rises it up and it is pretty roomy and you can also even extend the armrest even more you push down on the top piece of it right here is leather I'm pushing down on it you push down on it and another um, storage compartment pops out as you can see that's another hidden little hidden storage compartment where you can store and hide like little maybe small goodies cops pulling over some of these something to look for then of course you also got your get um, um, uh, glove box which looks just like any other normal glove box however you open up the gauge to come the um, glove box whenever you first get in you'll actually find this big old pouch now what's inside this big old pouch with branded Acura you open it up and you actually have all of your manuals like you got your owner's manual and then of course you also have your maintenance journal you also have your warranties journal you also have your 2014 consumer information booklet and then you also have your navigation manual you have all the different things that you want for your car inside of it you can even see all the first owner information this car was actually purchased from Lexus of Orange Park on 740 Blanding Boulevard Jacksonville Florida 
by John Beckin, which, which when John Beckin was the sales and leasing cons consultant. Interesting. And the owner's manual is just like any other or ordinary owner's, owner's manual. Talks everything about the car. That's why I've been finding most of the information in this review. I was scrolling through the owner's manual a little bit. I haven't found anything interesting in the owner's manual as I was reading it thoroughly. But that's really cool to see that. But that ain't all that's found inside of this. If you actually pull out this, there's actually a little tiny pouch. And inside of this pouch, it's hard for me to open it up with one hand. There we go. You will actually find... A little tool. I'm not actually sure what this tool is used for. I'm pretty sure it's to help take off the lug nuts. That's what I would assume. But you actually have a little tool to help you do something for the car. I don't know exactly what it is. And I'm pretty sure it's a lug nut cover. Yeah, it is. That's what I would assume it is. And it's branded Acura, which is really nice. And as you can see, the glove the glove box is pretty large. It has two different sections. It's, it's really, really nice and how and really nice and simple. Another thing you'll find inside of the gate of the glove box, you'll actually find these two dials. This actually controls the, ha the key fob status. Like that's the keyless entry sy access system. You can actually turn that on and off if you want. So if you don't want to use the keyless access system, system, you can turn that on and off by using these buttons right here. And you can also turn off the trunk poppers where you will have to pop the trunk open. And you can also lock the glove box as well. That's where the key comes in handy. So now, with the second key, you can grab the second key. It's hard for me to grab out. There we go. You can grab the second key and then you can actually use that key to lock the glove box and now the glove box cannot be opened in case you want to hide something in there or you, you can also twist it back and then you can unlock it to where you can still use the glove box so now that we're through with the passenger side we're going to go and take our attention up towards the top of course you got your sun visors with lights inside as you can see the lights work just fine or then you can also twist them over just like any other regular sun visor nothing too interesting about the sun visors this car does also have a sunroof as you can see the car does have a sunroof i probably should have done that for better lighting and it, uh, you can all just all of this stuff for the uh sunroof in this middle section and the sunroof works you uh, how the sunroof works you push it up and of course it actually opens up the sunroof really really cool if you don't want to open up the sunroof you can simply do this press it down and actually the sunroof then it closes we don't have to have the sunroof on and of course over here you got the dome lights they're all controlled by these two buttons right here that's how you control the dome lights so now with the buttons on the right dude that also controls the dome lights so if you press door see if the green little green light turns on that that's the dome turn on only with the door open as you all press turn it on on now now no matter what door is open they the lights will still as well, I'm gonna put it back on door. So now with the two right there, with the three buttons on the left here, these are actually home link buttons. You can actually pair your um, car to a garage door opener. So you can press one of these buttons to actually open up the garage door opener. Another really cool thing on the inside of this car is you actually have your own um, sunglass holders. As you can see, you push that button down and then you can actually store your sunglasses inside of this car as well. That's something, um, that's something I didn't even notice until I was exploring around this car. It's of the Acura TL, and I must say it's pretty roomy back here. I'm a rather tall human being, and I still got plenty of headroom back here. It's a really good, really good and comfortable back here. A lot of headroom, and also I got plenty of knee room. As you can see, it's a really nice place to be. It's what a four-door sedan should be. Just like up front, you also got a door handle right here that you can actually use to shut the door like you got the same pocket over here you got a smaller door compartment over here but it is a bit smaller of course you got nets on the back like you every other one you do got the window controls which work just like everything else in between the seats you got the climate controls but they're just like the ones up front so i'm not going to go into those you also have your own you also have cup holders as you can see you can pull back this switch and you actually have cup holders but one thing that is interesting, you actually have a trunk pass-through back here. Yeah, you actually have a trunk pass-through. You press this button right here, and then you can access the trunk from your car, as you can see. You can see I'm going in here. Now, I'm looking inside of the trunk. I mean, this is crazy. Hey, you, hey, you actually have your own pass-through into the trunk of this car, which is nice. You will also notice a button, a little lever that say latch. Now, those are for child seats. You also got two dome lights in the back seats as well. As you can see, you got your child seat anchors, just like in every other modern car today. Just like every other uh, modern car. The headrests, they can actually fold back, as you can see if you want to. And of course, to shut it, you gotta push this button. You gotta push it pretty far down, and that's how you can actually use 
That's what you actually press to lower the seat. So you do gotta press them pretty hard. Finally, I got it, just like that. And that's how you can use to actually fold up the seats and the backrests. And that's pretty much all the information on the interior of this car. I mean, this, my, my review has now finally been concluded. And so now that's the review of this 2014 Acura TL. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, now driving the new TL, the first impressions that I must say is the car does drive incredibly well. The, the, just how nice the quality of the interior of this car is, it's actually kind of a blast to drive. There's one thing I will say, there's one thing I don't say about most of the cars I've driven. I, but this, this is definitely one of the best cars that I've driven for the money. And another thing that I will say is that, 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 is that the brake and also the accelerator are very, very touchy. If you're not used to it, it's going to feel weird whenever you first drive it. Mm -hmm. And it is very, very yeah, it, touchy. We, we, it was not that far. But as you get used to it, and you know, when you, once you get used to it, it's an absolute blast to drive. And actually, yeah, I've actually driven this car yesterday as well. We actually, actually did a zero to, zero to 60 and also a zero to 100 test. And I must say, this thing did, just, even at 100 miles an hour, this thing did feel incredibly stable. I mean, it felt like you could go even higher with this car. This thing has a speed up to 160. But the thing is, like, well, even at 100, this thing felt so like easy to drive. It felt more stable and it did feel pretty good for a car like for a car like this. Now I thought one thing I will say, I would prefer driving this thing from the interior than the outside. The exterior styling is a little bit uh, skew with. But I will say that I do love how the interior of this car is. I love the tan interior. I love how everything's I love all the black accents as well. Because of how nice the leather build quality is in here it does feel like a really nice car and i have a good feeling in the future these cars will raise in value i can already feel it all right, all right let's look if, I, if i can find a good street wheels. really can't stand it. all right all right oh we got a nice road here let's drop the hammer a little bit hey, that's curves up here for you for sure man this car and this car does feel fast. I mean, it really does feel pretty fast. This thing feels. Yes. This thing does. Just be, if you believe it or not, feels about like a new Camaro. I'm not gonna lie. The handling is in, it is on demand. It is indirect. It is on demand. It's dead. It's dead flat. And believe it or not, this thing does have paddle shifters. I'll try to get. I'll try to use the paddle shifter sometime in this during this review as well. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in sport, full sport mode. Now we are in manual mode. Now I'm able to use these paddle shifters. Now the paddle shifter feel, uh, we got a nice, good, we got a nice, good looking road here. You see what I mean? This thing, I mean, this thing is just incredibly fast for what you get. You get second, you get third gear, man. This thing took off. Man. Mm -hmm. It really does. It really did. I mean, this thing does drive incredibly well. It does feel like a sports car. I'm the closest thing, I'm going to say, out of all the cars I've driven, I'm going to compare this thing closest to is a new Camaro. This thing feels about like a new Camaro. I'm not going to lie. And that thing, this thing is almost like, well, I believe like here, 350, almost 400 horsepower. Cruising around in fourth gear. I, mean, I don't know if you guys can hear the sound on camera, but the thing is, the sound does sound pretty good too. It does, now it ain't loud. It doesn't have any, like a loud exhaust on it or anything, but it does still sound pretty good. It's a nice sound that you can actually hear from behind. That's one thing I will say. The, 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 the gauge cluster, the gauge cluster, I love it. I love how the gauge cluster looks, but most of them are outdated now. Almost everybody's changing to a screen. So most of the if you're getting us getting inside this car, it does look outdated. But from this car's time, I can just imagine how futuristic this car would be for what you get, and it's absolutely crazy. I can now now cruise it around in fourth and fifth gear, and as I say, in fifth gear, it does also feel pretty safe. However, the paddle shifters they do waste a lot of gas. That's one thing I know. All right, I ain't gonna floor it here, but I'll just do a little tiny acceleration. Now there was about 75, that was about not even 50% throttle. This thing just still kind of jolt you back in your seat a little bit. I mean, it, it's amazing. I mean, this car is just a really cool car for what you get. And my dad told me that he paid $15,000 for this car. 
15,000 for what you get this thing is a steal so now, so now I'm on a nice straightaway here so it, it jolts you back in your seat <laughs> this thing's fast <laughs> I mean I would not have never I would have never expected that from a car like this so now I'm just cruising on the highway here and I must say I'm going 60 and I'm not gonna lie, this thing, it just feels really, really nice and smooth. All right, we're gonna get off the highway here, though. <laughs> I promise you, I'm gonna start talking a little bit too late. Get that one right there. Nope. Back up, back up. What? No, boy. Go tell you to get that other bump. That's the only one you missed. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's turning radius is incredible, too. <coughs> now, one thing, now, one thing that the backup camera on this car does have, doesn't have, is it doesn't have you know, this down screen, like the actual yellow piece and all other cars, they would actually move. And so there y'all have it. There's the full tour and review of the 2014 Acura TL. This is my most thorough review I have ever done on my channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, please make sure you guys go hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and also go drop a like on this video to support me in the channel. And also go follow me on all my social medias. They're going to all be a link in the description box down below. And also go subscribe to all my other YouTube channels as well if you guys want me to review your cool car and you from the Monroe Indian Trail area either hit me up in the comment section down below or direct email me to my email landon52604 at gmail.com and we will work something out for me to review your car let's please just please take it out i will need at least two hours with the car to fully film the review anyway guys if you guys you guys thank you all so much for watching today's video peace out